Now, here's the host of Good as Gold, Nick Grovich. Nick Grovich, I'm here with you live in Phoenix today. So if you'd like to join the show, you have any questions, comments, uh, anything you'd like to add or anything you would like to talk about, it always makes it easier for me. Give me a call at the station, 602-324-1510. Again, anything you'd like to talk about, it always makes it easier on me. Um, Seems like after I do a show, I'll get comments at the office. Why don't you talk about this or talk about that or answer this question? Even if you don't want to talk on the show, you can call. You can tell Ashley what you want me to talk about, and she'll pass it on to me during the break. So if you're too shy to be on live, call 602-324-1510, and I will be happy to answer your questions, even if you don't want to ask them on the air. If you have... um, specific questions or you need a portfolio review you have coins you don't know what they're worth you have coins you bought you don't know how they're doing you just want to see what's going on call my office um, 800-221-7694 that number works from phoenix or anywhere in the country we had a winner in our gold our gold quiz our gold uh, survey gold gold prediction David in Lancaster, Pennsylvania was the winner yesterday for guessing the closest to the spot price of gold at the close yesterday. You can go online, AmericanFederal.com, enter your guess at what gold will close at next Wednesday, and you can win a free silver eagle, brand new shiny silver eagle. They're worth, you know, they're worth about $20, $21 right now. And uh, if you win, I usually try and send you out a nice certified coin that's worth 25 to $35. So we try and throw in a little bonus if you win and take the time to participate. Uh, one other housekeeping item I'm going to mention before I get started is September, or I'm sorry, November 4th in Palm Springs at the JW Marriott. And I guess that's actually Palm Desert. We will be having... Uh, basically a three-hour workshop seminar um, about coins and bullion. Uh, We kind of keep it a little bit open. I, you know, I have things I I plan on speaking about, but again, um, you know, uh, we we try and keep the turnout kind of small, a little more intimate. And uh, so it, it opens it up. So if there's, you know, if there's a direction everyone wants to go in or something's happening at the time, uh, we're happy to change what we talk about and, and address your concerns. So if you'd like to go to that, it's uh, November 4th from 1 till 4 p.m., the JW Marriott in Palm Springs. Again, you can call the office 800-221-7694 or go online at AmericanFederal.com and sign up. We are actually filling up fairly quickly on that. So, um, like I said, I like to keep it fairly intimate. So, you know, we're not going to have 100 people there. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have 70 or 100 people there. We're going to keep it fairly small. So, call and uh, and sign up for that. Bring a friend. Bring your cousin, your wife, your husband, your uncle. Um, that's fine. We're glad to have everyone there. Um, well, today the metals are kind of quiet. They've come down a little bit off their highs. Uh, you know, gold sitting right around uh, 1165, 1166. Platinum still over a thousand dollars at a thousand fourteen. Uh, you know, platinum's up over a hundred dollars in the past couple of weeks. Silver is hovering just below sixteen dollars. It seems like it. Uh, it's just been bouncing around between about 1580 and about 1620 in that in that trading range. Palladium is $688 an ounce. Again, palladium did really well. It was down uh, down around five, $530, $540, and then ran up over $700. So that was a really big move in palladium. Um, the, only, um, the only platinum group metal that's still down quite a bit is rhodium, which is at $875. And I talked a little bit about rhodium. I'm not, you know, I'm not pushing it on you, but... Um, it's you know go, go on just go on on the internet and kind of look it up. It's uh, it's a very interesting metal, and uh, you know for many years we couldn't even trade rhodium because it came in powder form. And I remember uh, maybe it was 15 or 20 years ago I had a client who had uh, I don't remember how much but quite a substantial amount of rhodium and it, it came in vials. It was uh, like a white powder, 
And uh, I have to tell you, it was a heck of a thing to try and trade because you don't know what's really in the vial. You don't know if somebody opened the vial and put baby powder in it or baking soda or what they put in there. So you have you had to get it assayed and all that. It was a real pain in the neck to trade. Um, well, now they the last five years, there's a company, Baird & Company in uh, England, that actually makes a little one ounce rhodium bar and it it's uh you know it makes it possible to actually trade rhodium the same as you do platinum or gold or silver it just comes in a one ounce bar and the only reason i mention it with rhodium at 875 it's uh it's actually less than platinum right now which is kind of incredible um it's one of those metals you wouldn't want to buy this as your core holding it's more of a uh it's kind of a gamble, more of a, a high flyer. Um, you know, if it dropped down, you know, you could, if it really went through the, the floor, maybe it goes down to $700, $750, but it peaked out, I can't tell you which year, I, I wanna say 2001, I could be wrong, but it peaked out close to $11,000 an ounce. So it's just one of those things, you know, if you have, you already have your gold, your silver, your platinum, maybe you buy a couple ounces of rhodium just as a, as a flyer and you get lucky on it and uh, you know maybe it goes from 875 to four or five thousand dollars that'd be a nice little hit so i mean anyway if you're interested in that um you know give the office a call 800-221-7694 we could send you more information it, i think it's interesting the dow's up over a thousand points from its low and the metals have gone up also, of course, not to the same extent as the Dow, but the metals are holding in there pretty well right now. I think a lot of that is simply because the euro is so weak. Um, you know, in Europe, they're, they haven't decided what to do, although it looks like uh, the European Central Bank is really leaning towards more stimulus, which means printing more money. They're really, really worried about deflation over there, and they're doing everything they can to get a little inflation uh, into their system. And of course, printing a lot more money usually solves that problem, but so far it hasn't. And I think that's why you're seeing that, uh, you know, gold has been up uh, even even as the dollar has rallied quite a bit the last week. Uh, gold has actually uh, held its gains pretty well too. So it's, you know, normally when gold goes goes up the dollars going down and vice versa so i always i always pay attention when both the dollar and gold are up in value it tells you it just tells you that people are fleeing well they're basically fleeing the euro and they're buying uh anything they perceive as something that can hold value whether that's the dollar or gold or both right now so um we're getting ready for a break here when we get back i'll talk a little bit more about gold and silver i have uh, quite a few things i want to talk about in rare coins um, i'm still coming up with a trivia question after the break i'll come up with a rare coin trivia question also once again, here's Nick Grovich. Okay, I'm back with you. Um, if you're just joining us, we were talking a little bit about the precious metals. Um, you know, they've backed off a little bit from their most recent highs, but they're, they're, they're still very strong. You know, um, to a degree, I think it's because they're still viewed a little bit as commodities. Um, you know, the U.S. stock market, of course, is, has really... Um, really rallied nicely over the last few weeks i think we're up over 300 points today um well over 1700 or 17,000. i mean um it wasn't that long ago we were looking at uh if we were going to be in the 15,000s. so that's quite a comeback um and you know a lot of times people think well if the stock market goes up then gold and silver go down but this time around gold and silver have maintained their gains they've kept most of it and uh you know, part of this too, part of it is is the commodity market. We've talked about that before that it's, you know, at certain times in crisis, um, the precious metals are looked at as a uh, an alternative to cash or dollars or euros or whatever currency we're talking about. And in times like this, they're kind of viewed more as commodities. Um, you know, the, the Chinese market's been kind of all over the place. It's still considered very weak that they've had some up days and down days recently, but it's been basically a weak market. And the U.S. market's been very good. And so it, it leads me to believe that we're still, we're still kind of in that that mind frame of looking at the metals more as a commodity market than a financial market right now. And until that changes, you won't really see a really big run up in, uh, in the prices, but we are seeing these small gains uh, and, and they're adding up. I mean, platinum's up over 10%, palladium's up close to 20% and, uh, you know, even gold's up probably seven or 8%. So, 
you know, that's affecting the markets. The Fed still, you know, it seems like every week we hear about the Fed. Is the Fed going to raise rates or not raise rates? When are they going to do it? I think we can count on them raising rates. I see now a lot of people are thinking it's going to be 2016. I wish they'd just do it and get it over with because I'm kind of sick of hearing about it every day. Well, the Fed might raise rates. Um, and then I then I read some of these so-called experts. Oh, the the minute they raise rates, gold's going to fall. And then other experts are saying, well, the minute it, they raise rates, gold's going to go up. Um, you know, I see more people now saying once they raise rates, you're going to see the precious metals go up, simply because it's one thing that's overhanging the market that'll be out of the way. Uh, you know, my my opinion, I think that's already got to be worked into these markets. It's no secret that the Fed is going to raise rates. They've been talking about it forever. Um, It'd be nice to just get it done and over with so it stops affecting the market. So we'll see what happens if they finally raise them. It'll be kind of interesting uh, to see if the stock market reacts and see if the precious metals react. Like I said, I, I'd just be surprised if there's any big moves either way when they raise the rates because we all know it's coming. It's not a big surprise, but uh, I've been surprised before and maybe it'll happen. Everybody, you know, everybody reacts on the news sometimes rather than on the uh the theory or the, the rumor, I guess, is, is a better way to put that. So we'll see what happens if and when they finally raise rates, but it's just not something I'm really that concerned about at this point. Um, I'm looking at silver. I've been looking at numbers there, and it seems like demand for silver, the retail demand for silver has been really strong, but we don't really have a lot of institutional buying. And until you see some really big institutional buying come in, you know, the retail buying that is, that is uh, you know, by private investors, it's just not enough. I mean, it's not enough to really move the market substantially. And that's why you've been seeing these little moves up 20 cents, up 40 cents, down 30 cents. Um, these are fairly small moves in the market. And what it tells me is you just don't have any big buyers. You don't have the big institutional guys involved yet. And that's what I think we're waiting for to see anything substantial in uh, in the silver market. Now, one, one interesting thing I was reading today, let me see if I can find it here. Um, one of the, well, the third largest platinum mine, Lawnman, down in South Africa is having financial problems, as you can imagine. Um, it's costing about $1,600 an ounce to get platinum out of the ground, and platinum's only trading at just over $1,000 an ounce. Their stock is down 84% this year alone, and they're trying to raise $400 million. There's some worries that uh, the mine, this one mine, could actually go go under, go out of business. Um, that could be, you know, I don't know if they'll allow that to happen. The PIC, Public Investment Group in South Africa, is doing their best to try and keep the mine afloat. They're trying to raise $400 million through new stock offering. I don't know how that's going to go. They just raised $817 million three years ago, and they blew through that $817 million. But... You have to realize, and I've said this probably a hundred times now, that the three biggest mines in South Africa account for close to 80% of, of the platinum that's mined every year. So you take the third largest mine out of the equation, that could have a real dramatic effect on the price of platinum if, if this mine would go out of business or shut down for any type of uh, extended period. So again... I like platinum. I love it. I know uh, you know it's been it's been up and down, mostly down the last few years. But I really believe that uh, you know if you don't have any platinum, I think it's a great thing to pick up. Whether you pick up platinum eagles or platinum bars, maple leaves, koalas, whatever it is, um, just so it's a tradable pure platinum nine 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 five fine. It's not as not as pure as gold. It's very hard to refine platinum. But I really think that if you don't have any platinum, I think it's a really good thing to pick up and add to your portfolio. I mean, you don't have to go crazy, but I do think platinum's a great thing to pick up. Um, you could call the office. We can help you out. Even if you just want to pick up a couple ounces, I'm glad to do that for you. If you want 100 ounces or one or two ounces, we're glad to help you get platinum. Like I said, there's there's one ounce bars, one ounce coins. There's uh, you know for a little higher price, you can get platinum eagles, which are my favorite when they're priced right. But the problem with platinum 
is right now it's very cheap simply because demand just isn't there. Um, you know, so many of the, the world's economies are just barely hanging on. So the industrial demand for platinum is very low right now. But, you know, when this thing turns around, they start, the, the, the industrial users start needing platinum. There's just no way to increase the amount of platinum that's available. You're depending on these three mines and a, and a smaller amount of platinum coming out of Russia. And, you know, there's a few small mines in the United States. But it's really hard for them, for them to increase the amount of platinum they get. They're trying different mining methods right now in South Africa. Uh, which basically amount to strip mining rather than going two miles down for platinum ore. Um, you know, I guess I guess they're with the prices down right now, they're able to experiment a little bit and uh, see see if there are some different ways to get platinum, some less uh, less expensive ways to pull it out of the ground. But you know, thing like I said, if that one mine would turn uh, go out of business or shut down or even cut back on production. Uh, there's just no way for them to, to, to find platinum. It's not like silver where, you know, with silver, you see these big moves. You'll see it run up to $40 and drop $20 overnight. That's because there's so much silver already above ground. We have, we have billions and billions of ounces of silver that was used to make silver coinage. You have, uh, you know, silver flatware, silver um, sterling um, jewelry and cutlery and all that type of thing and when the price gets to certain certain price points that stuff comes out of the woodwork and people are lined up around the block selling it so that's why you see those big big moves in silver um, the last thing I'm going to talk about with the precious metals you know we've been talking about the uh, the supply problems that we've been having with the US mint and even with the, the private refiners well, it seems like premiums are finally coming back down to reasonable levels. 90% silver, your junk silver, which are the old uh, quarters, dimes, and halves. At one point, those were 5 to $6 over spot price. So that means when silver was $15 an ounce, you were paying $20 to $21 an ounce for, uh, for that silver. Um, now, now it's down to about $2.50, $3 over spot. So it's back closer to what a normal price range would be. Um, silver Eagles, they were up to $6 over spot. So again, at $15 silver, you're paying $21, $22, $23 a coin for them. Uh, that's come back down to, they're, they're down to about $3.50, $4 over spot. Um, and they're becoming a little bit more available. You're not having to uh, wait three months or two months to get delivery. Same thing with platinum. Platinum is becoming a little bit more um, available. So if you've been waiting until uh, until dealers have it back in stock, we do have platinum. We do have silver. Um, again, even if you want a roll or two of silver eagles, we can probably help you out at this point where you know a month ago, I simply didn't have it, couldn't find it without paying some ridiculous prices. So um, the interesting thing is when silver was fourteen fifty an ounce, a lot of people missed out. They didn't buy it fourteen fifty. But here today with, with silver at almost sixteen dollars, it actually cost you less today than it did when silver was fourteen fifty because the premiums are back down in, in uh in value so you know if you've been waiting to add a little bit of uh, silver platinum even gold it's not a bad time there's actually product available for a change um, and uh, especially silver eagles because what's probably going to happen pretty soon you're going to see the mint start shutting down 2015 production as they start getting ready to to make the 2016 coins a lot of times we go through the month of, of uh, november and december again with no uh, no supply from the mint so we have a little window here where you can actually buy coins so take advantage of that if you've been waiting to do it it wouldn't surprise me to see premiums really go back through the roof towards uh, the middle of november and december because we're going to be back in the same boat waiting for coins to be made once again here's nick grovich nick grovich back with you i'm going to spend the last half talking more about the rare coin market so here's a little trivia quiz for you. For some of you, this should be fairly easy. Um, in 1907 and 1908, the Mint went through a, a lot of design changes on the uh, U.S. gold coins. So in 1907, 
I can think off the top of my head of at least seven different gold coins that they made in 1907. Technically, there's more than seven. So if you can, actually, I just gave you half the answer, seven. I was going to ask you how many coins. Name seven different gold coins they made in 1907. Um, there's, like I said, there's probably more, there's really actually more than seven technically, but seven major um, different coins that they made out of gold, 1907, name seven of them and you will win a silver eagle so uh, that shouldn't be that hard let's see if somebody knows the answer if you know it off the top of your head that's even better yet uh, if you're a real collector you probably do know the answer so um, I wanted to talk about a couple of things um, first off we're gonna be at Financial Fest November 14th so we'd love to meet you if you have questions you want to come by and say hi come on over meet us um, we'd love to meet you you can you can take a look at you pick up some literature you can get a chance to ask us questions um, I will have my computer there if you want to compare coins I've got uh, 2700 different coins that I have tracked since uh, 1999 we can try you can any coin, almost any coin you have, I have some kind of representation in there. And we can chart it. We can show you how they've done since 1999. And uh, you can compare one coin to another. You can compare coins to stocks. You can compare coins to gold or silver. Um, so come by if you have a list. I'd be glad to show you how that works. That's something you can do on our website, but you've got to be a preferred client to really get into it. But again, you can sign up for that on the website, AmericanFederal.com. Come by and see us at Financial Fest. We'd love to see you. I will be talking. I don't think I know the time frame. I think, I think it's 10 o'clock in the morning, but I'm not sure. So one thing that's been coming up lately as far as rare coins I just wanted to take a minute on is a lot of people you know a lot of people will call me and they'll say well what's this coin worth or that coin worth and I'll give them an idea of what the value is and then they'll say oh well I looked on eBay and so uh, coincidentally as I as I'm thinking about eBay coin dealer newsletter wrote a little article about trading coins on eBay and I have to tell you most dealers I know I mean I know there's dealers that do sell on eBay most of the guys I know, when eBay first started back in 99, a lot of dealers got on, me included, and we thought, well, this is a great way to meet to, to meet a lot of collectors who were not getting through the, you know, the normal, um, you know, Numismatist magazine or Coin World magazine. And it's a good way to reach out and, and find collectors who uh, are not, not in the normal, I don't know what I'm trying to say, They're not not in the normal channels of, of finding collectors and, and coin investors. So eBay was was a real boon to that. And it's, you know, when it first started, it seemed it was uh, more mom and pop kind of stuff. And, it, and it, was, it was almost like a big flea market. You know, you shopped on eBay, it was almost like going to a flea market in some ways. Um, there were also a lot of really shady sellers on there. Um, I've never seen so many counterfeit coins as I've seen from people who bought coins on eBay. Um, I, I've, I've visited people in their homes, which is, which is what we specialize in. We'll come to your house and, and evaluate your coins. And, uh, you know, for a long time, I'd, I'd have people say, well, I bought all these gold coins and I got them for less than the gold's worth and I bought them all on eBay and, and I'd have red flags flying all over the place. And I'd get there, and 90% of the coins would be counterfeit. Um, I know I know. later on, I can't tell you which year, but within the last five years, eBay tried to clean up their act. They started going to coin shows, talking to dealers, trying to, uh, you know, they, they, they work on a percentage of sales, so they wanted to get, they wanted to get the dealers in there and start selling uh, both bullion and rare coins. And, you know, part of the problem is that you can't really sell bullion on eBay because they're, they're, um, the percentage that they take was more than what most dealers are making on their coins. So they, they did a little something where they gave us smaller, uh, smaller commissions to sell bullion. And the numbers look good. It was a good volume, but eBay wasn't making much money on it. And they pretty much they pretty much just dropped that whole area. For a while, they were really actively going after coin dealers to uh, sell bullion and coins on eBay, and it seems like uh, it seems like that whole department just got left in the dust, and they just forgot about us. But 
you know, it went from this little mom and pop type of thing. You had, uh, you know, you had people finding stuff in their attics and putting it on eBay. And you had, uh, like I said, kind of a flea market kind of uh, feel to it. And then they, they started getting bigger. And they started going after more corporate type of accounts. And they started instituting a lot of rules, which, of course, they needed. But what really hurt the small sellers was they started requiring that you have free shipping. Well, you know, it's when somebody buys a coin, and I know a lot of collectors get mad when you charge them shipping, but the fact is if, if you're sending out a $100 coin, you have a couple choices. You can either send it out with no insurance and hope it gets there, which is what we usually do with a $100 coin, um, or you can insure it and mail it and track it or certify it or register it. But that gets real expensive. Um, it probably costs, just to send a single coin out, probably costs 20 to $30 to insure it and register it and, and, and mail the darn thing. So, you know, people buy a coin for $50 or $100, and in general, dealers would usually charge anywhere from 10 to $20 shipping. So they really weren't even covering their shipping costs, and still people would complain. So eBay started their free shipping. So what that did is all of a sudden dealers couldn't really sell, you know, $20 coins and $50 coins and $100 coins without just taking the risk of putting it in the mail themselves. And, and you know, they lost coins once in a while, so it wasn't real worthwhile. Then they instituted a 30-day return policy. So, you know, in rare coins, especially bullion, anything bullion related like a St. Gauden or a Krugerrand or something like that, you just can't give a 30-day return. Gold goes down $100, everybody returns their gold coins. Um, the other thing that was happening is people would buy a coin from you on eBay, and then they knew they had 30 days, so they'd send it back to the grading services to see if it would cross over from NGC to PCGS. They'd see if they could upgrade it. Maybe they'd send it to CAC. So they'd have 30 days to go ahead and see if they could uh, if they could do something to maybe get a little more value out of the coin. Or even worse yet, they'd put it in their catalogs, their own catalogs. There's a lot of what we call vest pocket dealers. These are guys that aren't, they don't really have storefronts. They're just going from store to store. Or they have ads in uh, Coin Dealer Newsletter or news, Numismatic News or something like that. So they're basically getting free inventory for 30 days and then just returning whatever didn't sell. So it was a really bad deal for the dealers. And typically, you know, typically on rare coins, most dealers will give you a, a two-week return privilege. Um, on bullion, you know, when you're talking about St. Gaudens, which isn't exactly bullion, but close enough. Or um, if you bought Eagles or Krugerrands or something like that, um, you can't really offer a return privilege. It's like buying stocks and having two weeks to return your stocks. You know, people buy and, and just return it if the market went against them. So that 30-day return privilege really hurt. And then the last, the last thing that really hurt on eBay was they start penalizing you if you put a list of coins that you had on eBay. Well, let's face it, if you, if you put a list of your inventory on eBay, you're probably offering it other places too. But then if you sold a coin that was listed on your eBay inventory and you sold it elsewhere, eBay would penalize you for that. So, um, you know, I, it's not coming across that I really like eBay. I don't really have that much feelings about it. I don't, I don't use eBay anymore. It's just not worth the time. I don't really pay much attention to prices paid on eBay. I think for, for the average guy, it probably does give you an idea of at least a ballpark number where maybe some of the coins trade at. But even Coin Dealer Newsletter and the Certified Coin Exchange, these are these are the um, these are the places that dealers get our pricing from. They don't they don't look at eBay prices now. The Certified Coin Exchange that's an electronic exchange, and they monitor all the major auctions, even some of the minor auctions for pricing. They report to us. They show us what coins have sold for. We can click on it. We can actually see the coin. We can see which auction it was in. We can see which auction uh, number it was, and it gives us a lot of information. I've never seen them include an eBay item in CCE. So. I guess what I'm saying is be really careful. I don't really know what eBay does to screen their sellers anymore. Like I said, I just I can only tell you that I've seen so many counterfeit coins and so many overgraded coins on eBay, and they're um, 
the requirements for dealers just make it very, very hard for dealers to make money. So it's, uh, you know, you have a couple of coins, you want to try and sell them there. Maybe it's right for you to sell, unload a couple of coins, but it's not a real great place to go if you're selling coins and you have to really be careful if you're buying coins there you're really better off you're really better off to just get uh, you know depending on what type of coins you're collecting or buying go with go with a local dealer or you can go in you can see the coins you can touch the coins you can learn something while you're there um you know, of course, uh, we deal in rare coins, too. So if you're interested in serious coins, we're always happy to help you. And you can always call the office, 800-221-7694. And we're glad to look up pricing for you. Whether you're buying it from us or you want to check a price out before you buy the coin, call us up. We'll look it up. We'll tell you what the coins are going for, what's a reasonable price to pay, what it's worth if you had to resell it, so that you have a little information before you just run out and start buying coins. So many people... Get a call from a broker on the on the on the phone, and the broker says, "Oh, we've got a great deal here," and they tell you all about this deal, and you've got to buy it right now because these coins will be gone tomorrow. And people just buy it and have no knowledge at all about the coin. I want to tell you, there's it's it's so rare that a dealer has a coin that you have to buy within the next five minutes that you're going to miss out on something. So you you have somebody give you a spiel like that on the phone. Call us up. Call us at the office. Once again, here's Nick Rovich. Okay, I'm back with you. One more segment. I have two things I'd like to cover. Let's see if I get to them both. Um, many of you know I'm a Penn State alumnus. Uh, I went to Penn State back in 1976 till 1980. I graduated as a Nittany Lion. I have a new wife as of October 9th, and she's from Ohio State. She's a big Ohio State fan. So, uh, as you know, you probably know on the 17th, Ohio State played Penn State. Ohio State was favored, but I can't root for, I couldn't root for Ohio State. So we had a little bet going at my house, and my beautiful wife, of course, said Ohio State was going to kill Penn State, which they did, uh, 38 to 10. Uh, in the beginning, you know, Penn State started off with a three-point field goal, and I was feeling pretty good, so I got to, I got to be king for all of about ten minutes. And then Ohio State killed us, and as part of my bet, I had to come on the radio and tell everybody how great Ohio State is, the national champions. So now I've done that, and I can go home tonight and probably still get dinner. Um, Kevin Fox, the, the manager here at the station, is another Ohio State fan al or alumni. And uh, so I'm kind of surrounded and outdone by Ohio State here. So hopefully hopefully Penn State gets a better team next year and uh, the tables may be turned. But for now, I guess I have to back Ohio State to keep things good at home and to pay off my bet. So, Laura, I hope you're listening. There's, there's your bet all paid off. Back to business. I started talking a little bit last week about a way that you could make money in rare coins. And this is not for any, everyone. There's a new program I'm starting. I would basically be your partner. Unfortunately, this is not for somebody with a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollars. It takes a, a bigger, uh, a bigger investment than that. But let me explain this a little bit. I've got about ten minutes, maybe less, to explain this to you. I've talked about uh, several things on the program. One. The first thing is that at a lot of the auctions, there's a lot of huge auctions going on right now. In fact, the last couple of years, there's been some phenomenal auctions. There's coins that uh, I've never seen before um, that have been on the auction block here the last couple of years. And there's lots of them. Um, the Pogue auction, I think there was there are four different coins that went for over a million dollars. One went for something like two point eight million, and quite a, and two three other ones went for a million, a million and a half dollars. You know back. 10, 20 years ago, a million dollar coin was a big deal. Now they're in every auction. What I'm getting at is the uh, auction houses will use these big auctions as a way to get consignments from other people. So they'll say, well, give us your collection. We'll put it in the Pogue auction or the Gardner auction. These are, these are big names in the uh, coin business. So a lot of people will 
put coins in auction that quite frankly really shouldn't be in an auction or coins that are not all that rare or all that desirable and it's not really what people are going to these auctions for when they're going to, to this you know like the pogue auction which is a, a current one that's being a collection being auctioned off they're going to see these true rarities they're going to see these one-of-a-kind coins they've got the dealers have want lists they're going there for specific reasons so there's a lot of coins in the auction that like i said they're not terrible coins, but they're not that rare that, that the dealers are going to the auctions just to get those coins. And so there's usually a good number of coins that will sell for anywhere from 30 to as much as 70% less than what the current bid is. And it's just an inefficiency in the market. Um, you know, we talked, uh, I talked a couple of weeks about, ago about having perfect knowledge. Well, nobody has perfect knowledge. Nobody has uh, unlimited amount of time to put pricing together. So when they go to an auction, uh, a lot of guys just aren't prepared to know, gee, that, that silver dollar is going for $1,000 and there's a bid of $1,400. It takes an inordinate amount of preparation to be able to go and just pick up all the coins that go for less than bid. Um, that said, doing all that work ahead of time allows me to go buy quite a few coins at, like I said, anywhere from 30 to as much as 70% less than bid. And of course, that's that's fairly easy money, assuming you can do all the work ahead of time. You buy a coin for a thousand dollars; it's bid at thirteen hundred. You bring it home, you hit bid for thirteen hundred. Just made a quick thirty percent. That's one way that we're going to make money in the rare coin market. And you know, we don't really care about the coin. We're not buying the coin because we want to own it. We're buying the coin because we're just going to turn it. We're just going to flip the coin and make a profit on it. The second avenue for making money is the CAC, Certified Acceptance Corporation. And I've talked about that before also on this program. Uh, I won't go into I won't go into a whole lot of uh, whole lot of detail on it, but CAC basically puts a sticker on the coin that basically tells collectors and investors that that coin is in the top echelon of the grade. So if there's 10 MS65 St. Gaudens and two of them have CAC stickers, it's telling you that those two are probably the high end of the MS65 scale. And what I've noticed over the years as I price coins out for clients, because we buy, we buy millions and millions of dollars worth of rare coins every year. We travel all over the country. We look at collections big and small. I mean, we buy collections for a couple thousand dollars. We buy collections for a couple million dollars. And so I'm always checking prices. And what I noticed is any any of the CAC coins, CAC, they'll go for 30 to as much as uh, four or five hundred percent more than a non-CAC coin. And over the past six months, I've been sending a lot of coins to CAC. I'm, a, I'm one of their authorized dealers, the only one in the Phoenix area. And it makes a huge difference. Um, I've had, right now I can tell you, I had an 1897S $20 Liberty MS66. Very, very rare coin. I don't expect you'll know the, the date. But that coin, before I sent it to CAC, it was an MS66 NGC holder. And I was getting bids of about twenty-six to twenty-eight thousand dollars on it. I sent it to CAC. They loved the coin as much as I did. They put their sticker on it, and I just sold the coin this week um, to another major dealer um, on the East Coast, and he paid me forty-two thousand dollars for the coin. That's a heck of a nice profit for getting a little green sticker put on a coin. I, I haven't figured out the percentage, but that's a huge amount of money. Um, I do that for clients all the time. If they send me coins and I'm going to sell the coins, um, the first thing I do is I, I look at them to see if we can possibly get a CAC sticker on it. And it, it brings us a lot more money. Even cheaper coins. I had a, a Seated Liberty Dime. It's a twelve, thirteen hundred dollar $1,300 coin. We got the sticker on it. We got $2,300. Percentage-wise, that's, that's a heck of a profit. Now, where we can make money on this is by diligently going to the coin shows and going case by case and finding coins that we think could be nice enough to get that sticker and again we can pick up 30 to 100 percent profit on those coins the, the, the what we're trying to do is buy coins that do not have the sticker get the sticker on them and then collect that premium i'm going to take a break here it looks like we have a phone call hi this is nick hi nick this is victor and prescott i have a guest on the Seven gold coins minted in two in uh, nineteen oh seven. Okay, terrific. Uh, 
1907, they made a, a double eagle, St. Goddess, which had Roman numerals on it. Right. They had one that had uh, Arabic numerals on it. Correct. They had a $20 Liberty. Right. They had a $10 Indian. They had the $10 Liberty, the $5 Liberty, and the $2.5 Liberty. So what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. That's wonderful. They also, on the uh, the one, there's one more you missed, but that's the seven. Patent, I'm sorry? The patent in 1907, high relief. The high relief, which would be the Roman numeral. And on the $10 Indian, they had, had a wire rim. It was almost a high relief $10 oh, Indian. I see. So that's why I said there was at least seven and technically more than that. So that oh, okay. great job. You, you knew those. I'm going to send you out a, uh, a silver eagle. Hold on, and Ashley, you'll get your name and number. Well, I was talking about, looks like we're running out of time here, but I was talking about how you make money in some of these rare coins. Um, I did just finish writing a little article about this. Um, I'll try and talk more about this. I always seem to run out of time at the end. Call the office 800-221-7694 and I'll give you more information.